In this video, I'll walk through two examples of solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Our first example is x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. The first thing you want to do when you're completing the square is to get all of the constant terms on the right hand side. Now this is just, these examples start with equaling 0 on the right hand side, but you might have equals 5 or whatever on the right hand side. But whatever you need to do to get the constant terms all on the right hand side. So we need to subtract 12 from each side. So we get x squared minus 8x, I'm going to leave a space here, equals negative 12. I subtracted I subtracted 12 from each side to get it away from the left hand side. Now you're asking yourself why did I leave a space there? It's because we're going to fill this in so that we can complete the square. We are going to make this left hand side into a perfect square trinomial so that we can factor it very easily. And then that'll help us to solve the equation. What do we want to put in there? Well, we're going to take half of this middle coefficient, so negative 8 divided by 2, and then square it. And that's what we're putting in. So negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. And negative 4 quantity squared, remember negative times a negative is a positive, so I'm putting in positive 16. So let me just rewrite that so we're clear on that. I've got x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals negative 12. Aha! Whatever I add to one side, I've got to add to the other side. So equals negative 12 plus 16. Now, let's factor this, this left-hand side. Well, we've made it into a perfect square trinomial, so it factors very nicely as x minus 4 quantity squared. And yes, it will factor, if you see that, it will factor as x plus or minus, whatever this number is, this was negative 4, uh, this, this number. So x plus a negative 4, and then quantity squared equals 4 on the right-hand side. Now we can take the square root, and this is why we complete the square, so that we can take the square root of each side, and remember when you take the square root to solve, you've got to say plus or minus. And what, what does that leave us with? Well, it leaves us with x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. So at this point, we're going to have two possible answers, right? We're going to add 4 to each side. And so what do we get? Well, we get x equals 4 plus 2 and x equals 4 minus 2. So we have two possible answers. That's x equals 6 and x equals 2. And that's the process for completing the square. You could pause it now and try to do this next example. And then you can come back. And here I go with this next example. We want to do whatever we can to get all of our constant terms on the right-hand side. So I'll add 5 to each side and be left with x squared plus 6x equals 5. Now I'm going to add in this void left, I'm going to add half of this middle coefficient quantity squared. So that is 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So I've got 9, whatever I add to one side, I've got to add to the other. Nice. Now we can finish this, or continue with this, by factoring this perfect square trinomial that results in the left-hand side. And we've got x plus, remember it's going to be this number that we squared. So this is 3, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so x plus 3 quantity squared equals 14. Now when we take the square root, the process is exactly the same. We don't get a nice integer for the square root of 14, so we'll just leave it in its radical form there. And we get x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 14. We are going to subtract 3 from each side, and we get x equals negative 3 plus the square root of 14. And we also get x equals negative 3 minus the square root of 14. Two distinct answers. Now, with a calculator, of course, you could get some approximation for those answers. But, but those are the exact answers. That is in, left in radical form. And that's, a, that's the process for completing the square.